Spider-Man Homecoming was not Transformers The Last Night. It was the exact opposite. Directed by John Watts, Spider-Man Homecoming is the first entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe of the legendary web-slinger Spider-Man. And it was a really good movie. I'm going to say that right now. It was a great, 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 great movie. And on this video, on this review, I'm going to tell you exactly why it's a great movie and why you should go see this film. Now, I'm pretty sure most people watching this are probably going to go see this movie for various reasons. Number one, you're probably invested in the MCU. Number two, you're probably a fan of Spider-Man. Spider-Man is one of the most popular characters in the history of comic books, and all his movies make money. Even the amazing Spider-Man movies, which many folks did not like, and some considered a flop, still made money. They always make money. Spider-Man draws money. So people are going to go see this damn thing, but are they going to enjoy the film? Honestly, I think that you will. I think you will like this movie. Now, the thing about this movie, the one word I can use to describe this movie is fun. It's a really fun movie. It's more along the lines of Ant-Man versus something like Civil War. You know, you've got the Captain America movies, which are kind of like espionage films. You know, they're kind of like um, really good, very tonally serious films. Then you have this movie, which is really fun, really lighthearted, but not so much that it's a clown show. You know, I felt that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was a great movie, but there were way too many jokes in that movie. This movie, I thought, was a little bit What's the word I'm looking for? It was less jokey, but when it did make jokes, the jokes, I think, hit better in this movie. I actually think this movie was funnier than Guardians 2. Now, the thing about this movie going into it is that this movie really needed to be good, not just for Sony and for the MCU, but for Tom Holland, because he is the newest Spider-Man, and the success of this character really, really dependent on his performance. And let me tell you right now, Tom Holland is a fantastic Spider-Man, fantastic young Spider-Man. Honestly, he is my favorite Spider-Man that we've seen on the big screen as far as actors go. No disrespect to Tobey Maguire or to Andrew Garfield, but I do think that Tom Holland is perfect to play a young Spider-Man. Now, a lot of this movie does take place in high school, but... I was worried going into it that it was going to be one of those cheesy high school movies, but it really wasn't. It was really well structured because they didn't keep you in the high school scenes for too long. They would cut away to other stuff that's more important and then come back to it. But the idea of this Spider-Man character, the one that Tom Holland is you know, creating here, you know, is, is helping mold, is that he's a young guy who has big dreams big aspirations, a lot of power, and a lot of responsibility. Now, it's interesting because in this film, there's no Uncle Ben mentioned whatsoever, nothing about with great power comes great responsibility, but the theme of the movie, this was brilliant, the theme of this movie is with great power comes great responsibility because the entire film is a coming-of-age story for Peter Parker. It's not an origin story. You don't find out... You know, you don't see him get bit by the radioactive spider, even though it is mentioned. You don't see him learning his powers like he did in Spider-Man 1 with Tobey Maguire. It's not that kind of movie. He already knows how to use his powers. This is more about a boy becoming a man. This is more about him learning to be a responsible superhero and not just be a superhero for the glory. And that I loved about this movie. I love it. It's almost like a, like a It's almost like it's a piece of... Like, they harped in on the coming-of-age sort of piece of the movie, of the story of Peter Parker, and really focused on that versus showing all the unnecessary origin stuff. We already know the origin of Spider-Man. You don't have to do another movie, you know, talking about that. Now, Michael Keaton was amazing as the Vulture. I thought, you know... Michael Keaton's always awesome. He's always awesome. I thought he was menacing. I thought he was you know, methodical. I thought he had a great purpose. And the thing is that, as it stands right now, I think the Vulture may actually be my second favorite MCU villain so far in the movies, in the movies. In my opinion, I think the best villain they've had so far in these movies is probably Baron Zemo from Civil War. Mostly because he has no powers, he's just a regular guy, you know, just a regular human but he's so driven and so motivated that he causes a rift between the superheroes with his mission you know i like that with this character of the vulture he's a complex character because you know the way that 
Michael Keaton portrayed Adrian Toomes is like this character is motivated and his motivations are actually kind of understandable. Like if you're a person watching the film and you hear the things that he says, yeah, he's a little sociopathic, let's be honest, but in some ways he's really not sociopathic. I think he has sociopathic moments, but he's a guy who actually cares about his family and wants to do right even though he's kind of pulling a Robin Hood thing. He's kind of like a villainous Robin Hood. Rob from the rich, give to the poor, except in this film it's give to, you know, criminals and whatnot. So it's one of those things where he's a complex character and an interesting villain, and I thought the movie gave a lot of focus to him. I wish they would have given him a little bit more focus. I really do wish they would have maybe told more of how he got wrapped up in that sort of thing. We saw at the beginning of the film, you know, the, the remains of... The Avengers 2012 movie, which is Tari, he used to work in construction there and whatnot, you know, finding the alien technology and then getting kind of the shaft, you know, without going into spoilers. So his motivations make sense. He has a weird hatred for, you know, the rich and whatnot, but it's also kind of understandable because a lot of people in the world have that same hatred. So very well done stuff here. Um, I like the fact that this movie tried new things. I love that. I was so worried going into this movie. You have to understand, guys, I was worried because this is the sixth Spider-Man, the third reboot in like 10 years. Um, Because if you remember, the Spider-Man 3 came out in 2007, which was 10 years ago. And so I was kind of like hoping that You know, what could they do with this movie? Because the other movies, you know, Amazing, the Amazing Spider-Man series and the Sam Raimi movies, they're, you know, they've told a lot of stories. And I just kind of was hoping that this wouldn't become another version of those movies. I was not wanting like a Norman Osborn type thing. I didn't want like a Doc Ock thing, even though I do like those characters. I didn't want that here. I wanted something different. And the movie did try new things. Unfortunately, though, the issue is that there are a lot of similarities. There's a lot of focus in this movie on tech. This is the most technological Spider-Man movie we've ever seen. I know I prophesied that or prognosticated that previously in my previews here on World of Geekdom. And I talked about how... In the movie, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, is going to have access to all kinds of tech. Well, actually, he has access to even more tech than I originally thought. He's got tons of technology, and one of the plot threads of this movie is him trying to figure out how to use this technology. Because Tony Stark gives him an enhanced suit, and the suit has all of these little, you know... um, Uh, weapons and enhancements but because he decides to skip his training and not go through it the right way he doesn't know how to use it so it's kind of like a kid being given the trigger switch to like a nuke you know what I mean you've got this incredible power and because you're so hyped up to be this superhero you didn't take the time to properly train yourself in how to use the technology and you weren't even supposed to in fact they even call it the training wheels program I love that about the movie it's about this kid who wants to be a superhero he has the powers but he doesn't have the responsibility and there's a scene where tony tells him i don't want you to be like me i want you to be better i love that i love the relationship between robert downey tom holland you know tony stark peter parker in this movie it's a different dynamic we have not seen that before in previous spider-man movies spider-man did usually have like a male mentor Most notably, Spider-Man 2, you know, Peter Parker looked up to Octavius. It's kind of similar here, you know, except in this case, of course, Tony is a good guy. And he's in the movie just enough to where he doesn't overshadow Spider-Man. It's another concern that I had that the charisma of Robert Downey would overshadow Tom Holland. But Tom Holland's really charismatic. Every time he's on screen, he comes off like a genuine guy. He has great facials. When he's confused, he looks confused. This guy's a prodigy. He's a young dude. Very, very young, playing a huge character, a historic, monumental character, and he nailed it. He is nervous when he needs to be, he's brave, and he always wants to do the right thing. So this portrayal of Peter Parker is really, really likable, and a staunch contrast to how he was in Spider-Man 3. Even though he had the black costume and all that in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3 movie... Still, like, it was still annoying and cheesy. In this movie, Tom Holland has a sense of genuineness to it. And really, he carried this movie. Most of this movie, it's Spider-Man Homecoming for a reason. 
focuses on him. There are scenes with him and his best friend, scenes with him and, and Adrian Toomes, the vulture, scenes with him and Tony Stark, and every time that he interacts with these characters, he is the same guy, and he's amazing every single time. Like, he's in there with these great actors, you know, Michael Keaton, Robert Downey, and he nails it. Now, another guy who got a crap load of screen time was Jon Favreau, you know, Happy Hogan. He was all over this movie, and it was good to see him there. Another reason why you should see this movie is this movie actually ties in some unfinished storylines from the old Iron Man movies. In fact, they reference Iron Man 1 in this movie. So... What I loved about the movie is that it actually was able to fit into the MCU, but the past, the present, and the future, as well as tell its own story of the coming of age of Spider-Man. I loved it. It was so freaking well made. I'm so, so happy this movie's out there. Here's the big question you're probably wondering, though. Is it better than Spider-Man 2? I think it's the best one since Spider-Man 2. I don't know if it's better, because I really like Spider-Man 2. I really enjoyed that film. Alfred Molina's performance, I would say, was unbelievable. He's my favorite villain that we've seen in any Spider-Man movie. And I love Norman Osborn in Spider-Man 1. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the other ones are bad. I'm saying my personal favorite was Molina as Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2. Michael Keaton in this movie is great. I don't think he was able to hit the performance that Doc Ock hit, but... He came close. And it's not his fault. It's a different character. Adrian Toomes a different guy. But there are similarities because I feel like Adrian Toomes, the vulture in this movie, had his life gone down a different path, he would have never, you know, been this guy. You know, and, and in fact, in the mid credit scene, you know, this is not really a spoiler, but they kind of tease that he's, because he's not dead. That part is a little bit of a spoiler, so my bad on that. He doesn't die in this movie, which I liked. But they tease that... He may have involvement in a sequel because it's coming out July 5th, 2019. That's going to happen no matter what. It's been announced. And it's teased that he might actually... And I'm not going to say why. It's explained in the movie, which I love because, again, it goes back to Spider-Man doing the right thing even if he's dealing with bad people. You know, it's implied that he might be on Spider-Man's side, maybe protecting him. You'll find out why when you go see the movie. I don't want to really give spoilers out. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I loved it. I was so worried it was going to be, you know, again, treading old ground, but they tried new things. There are scenes in the movie where Spider-Man cannot go, like, there are scenes where he's in a neighborhood where there's no tall buildings, and he has to figure out, okay, I can't shoot web, I can't, you know, shoot web and cling onto buildings, so what do I do? Well, he has to run, chop over houses, you know, use trees, that was pretty cool, we haven't seen that before, Um, I love that. We also focus more on Spider-Man's brute strength, which I loved about Civil War. You see him lifting up things and moving stuff around. And, you know, there's a scene in the movie that's clearly an homage to the train scene from Spider-Man 2. Very similar. In fact, in the trailer where he's holding the two pieces of the uh, of the ferry together. That was fantastic. Just a great, just a fun movie. It was a fun movie. It really was a fun movie. Also, there were a couple of little hints and homages to the comic books. For example, Donald Glover's character is, without going into spoilers, the uncle of a certain very important Spider-Man character, which I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, there was a good twist in the movie when uh, Peter goes to take this girl on a date and he opens the door and he sees who her dad is. That was awesome. I love that twist. Um, there was a cool little, I guess, hint of future Avengers movies. There's a plot thread going on with Happy Hogan and the old Avengers Tower. Not getting into spoilers, but that's going to lead to the next Avengers movie. So this movie is actually not one of those movies. Let me explain this, okay? Guardians of the Galaxy 2 did not add anything to the MCU. It was a story about Peter Quill and his friends. Not saying that's a bad thing. It was focused on them. This movie actually is a piece of a larger puzzle. Like, you have to watch this movie to watch the rest of the MCU movies. You don't have to watch Guardians 2. It's a good movie. You don't really have to watch it, but this one you do because this one sets up things for the future and references things from the past, but still focuses on Spider-Man, which was great, 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 great stuff. Love this freaking movie. Go check it out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're going to talk spoilers, please, please Give a warning, and I may do more videos, more movie talks about this movie because I had a great time watching it. What a blast. Thank you. Talk to you guys later.